what's up gamers today's um topic is digital versus physical and with i mean this is a good topic to talk about and it could be discussed all the way up until whenever you know because um my thing is i don't think they'll ever stop making physical copies of disc you, you know they physical copies of disc, it's been reported a few months ago that the physical copy of any game um, sells more than than a digital copy but anyway let's get into this discussion <clears throat> and if you and you know I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people whose opinion differ from, from mine and you know leave it in the comment section you know what I'm saying um, let's talk about it you know but yeah um, first let me make a few points on you know digital and versus I mean versus and versus physical with the digital game, um, the strongest selling point is being able to play the game day one, or actually day zero, when the game is, you know, officially released at 12 o'clock midnight, or, you know what I'm saying, in some cases, we have to wait until 3 o'clock midnight, it all depends, you know what I'm saying, um, because I say that with the release of Drive Club, I wasn't able to play it at 12 o'clock midnight and I bought that game digitally through the PlayStation Network. I had to wait until 3 in the morning for it to unlock. But another point is that uh, when you buy a game digitally, when you pre-order it, you can preload it onto your console and um, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 just started doing that uh, this year from what I think PS4 might have been doing it last year, I don't know, I can't remember. I'm not trying to give one console the upper hand. I'm just saying. And, um, you know, that's another strong point. You, you can pre-load the game on there so, you know, you don't have to sit back and be waiting, being waiting for it to download. Even though, you know what I'm saying, some download speeds are faster than most nowadays. And, um, you know, that's just a good, strong case for our uh, digital. Now, now, if you're a PC owner, um you know you can you, you know you can do these same things and everything and on steam they have it to where let's say um if the game is riddled with bugs or whatever you know if it's broken or something anything you know if you don't like it, i think you have a certain amount of time before you can um trade you know not trade it but ask for a refund back you know what I'm saying get your money back that you spent on that game and that right there needs to be implemented on across the board you know what I'm saying on every platform because there's some games out here that you buy day one and they need to be patched really bad and you can't play it you know uh, Batman Arkham Knight proved that on the PC you know and the PC is supposed to be the su superior platform and that game was horrible you couldn't play it a lot of people complain people got their money back because Steam had just implemented that plan into digital gaming um on the physical side you have you know you have the midnight release parties you know what I'm saying GameStop or whatever Best Buy or whoever is selling this game at night you know what I'm saying right there at the you know stroke of midnight or whatever um you can actually you know what I'm saying you 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 they might throw a party or whatever you know and, and the atmosphere of that is very good you know what I'm saying that's the whole thing about you know what I'm saying gaming is you know having fun you know and, and follow me now let's say you um let's say you you, you know you pre-order a game through GameStop they call you and tell you well, we're having a midnight release party or midnight release opening and um if you be here at such and such date uh, you know what i'm saying just you know secure your spot in line because that's you know they've gotten a lot better with that you know what I'm saying other than you know a few years ago and it was terrible and um they'll make sure that you know you won't be out there bored and and just you know not having fun you know they have they have live djs they order food they have giveaways and contests and and it's just, you know, meeting different gamers all around. You'd be surprised how young and how old gamers are that go to these, you know what I'm saying, midnight release parties. You don't have that digitally. And you won't have that digitally, you know. 
and yeah, you can throw your own party, whatever, but it, then you'd be sitting at home, you know, being lame. You know, that's really lame. You know, doing it at home, having a party just for a game to release at home. Let somebody else spend that money to throw that party. Uh, another point is um, building up your library. Now, you know, on the digital side, you know, like on the PlayStation 4, you can go to your library and you see all your digital content you have. All the DLC that's, you know, on it and everything and all that. And that's nice. But me personally, I like to hold my game in my hand. I like to look across the room and see my collection and see all those cases and everything. And I like to go over there and be like, what do I want to play? You know, it's that's just, you know, it's just the old school part of me, you know. And I've always been like that, you know. Um, uh, what's another thing about digital? Another strong point about digital is, um, let's say you got a lot of old games, which not, I know a lot of you games out there are collectors. You got just about every game that you've ever bought. Then you got a lot of people out there just have a big bunch of old games that they're not even playing no more because they got their money's worth out of it. You can take these games, let's say three, four, maybe five, trade them in, it all depends on how old they are now, and you will get store credit for these games. And, like I said, it depends on how old they are. And that, you know what I'm saying, you, you might not even have to pay any money out your pocket for a brand new release. I did that with Metal Gear Solid 5. I took a few old games that I wasn't playing anymore because I got my money's worth out of them. I had fun. I did all I can do on them. And I knew I wasn't going to play them anymore. They was in my collection. They were sitting there. And I was like, well, let me take these and trade them in. Because I don't want to spend any money on this game. You know what I mean? Not saying it's going to be a bad game or anything. But I looked at it as in, okay, I just got finished paying my phone bill, my light bill, and, you know what I'm saying, my internet bill. Uh, money's kind of tight. Let me take a few games and trade it in. And that's exactly what I did. And I didn't have to pay a dime to get the Phantom Pain. So that's a plus, you know what I'm saying? And, and GameStop is not the only ones around here doing that. And I'm not trying to advocate for GameStop. I'm not trying to just say, oh, GameStop don't ever do it. Because this discussion came up on an article that GameStop uh, uh, was featured in about they're no longer selling bundles with digital codes in them on the consoles. All of their bundles are going to have the physical game in it. And they can do that. Because if they buy these consoles, you know what I'm saying, from the company, they can sell it any way they want. You know if they're buying the consoles, they're buying the game. So if they buy the game, they can automatically be like, okay, here, here's Madden and PS4 for the price of what a PS4 costs. You know, and bam. That's This is why this discussion come up. And, um... Me personally, I like the, the physical version of the game. The, dis the digital version um, is okay, I think. And I, I, I think pretty much that if um, if I would have had the physical version of Drive Club, I probably would have traded it in by now. But while, you know, as long as I have the digital version, each time they come up with season pass, uh, content, DLC, and all that. You know, I have the option to buy it, try it out, or whatever. And I still have it. You know what I'm saying? Regardless. And to tell you the truth, I do want the physical version of Drive Club. Because I know there's a lot of gamers out there that double dip. You know what I'm saying? You buy the digital version, and you buy the physical version. Because you might buy the physical version for the collector's edition. But you get the digital version just because, you know, maybe you're a fan of the company, the developer that's making this game, or you're just a fan of this game, or you just don't want to open the game, period. You want to have it as the collector's edition so it keep its value. So, you know, physical versus digital, it actually goes hand in hand. But the, the thing that kills the, the digital idea for me is the price of the games. Why is it so high for the price of this game being digitally sold? You know, it's not like you can take this game with you to the next platform that comes out within the next, you know, six years. You can't. You're basically renting this game to play it until the life cycle of this console, which is digital, physical. You can trade it in, you know. Um, but why is the price so high? $60 
what fifty nine ninety nine for a game. Okay, okay. Let's say they stop making physical copies. That means there's no more disc. There's no more cases. There's no more paper. The price of the game should drop. Not saying tremendously, but at least to like forty five dollars for the game, maybe forty. It should never be as high as it is now. And me personally, I think the uh, gener last generation gamers are still getting ripped off because they're paying top dollar for a game that's, you know what I'm saying, on an older generation, the same as we're paying. So you see how these companies are really, you know, they're really getting over on us. And if they have their way, they will get over on us completely. That's why you have them, they, they trying to push digital gaming more because they know if they do away with the physical copy they can still charge us what they want for this game they'll come up with some reason why the game is still high you know what i'm saying but no no that's just them being greedy um i, I forgot one youtuber said that these companies don't love us and that's true they love what we have in our pockets they love what we have in our bank accounts as far as the gamers, us, no. They just want to. They they want to keep us content. And and doing that, they you know they might answer us on Twitter. They might you know what I'm saying you know release a game that we really like, uh, Shenmue Three, and all that you know what I'm saying. But really, they just want our money. Um, and and that's what it all boils down to. So, you know, we still got, you know what I'm saying, a little power in this while we still getting, you know, physical copy of the games because we can take those games and trade them in and knock the price off of a brand new game. You can't do that for digital. You won't be able to do that with digital. You can't, they're not going to let you take their digital library and, and trade all of those in for a new game. No, they're not going to do that. But anyway, I mean, that's just, you know what I'm saying, my opinion. My opinion doesn't count for anyone else's. Uh, it's not fact. <laughs> it's just my opinion. If you disagree, sound off in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? If you like the video, you know what I'm saying? Thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing this for any kind of YouTube money or YouTube fame or anything like that. I'm not the truth to YouTube. I'm not your favorite's favorite or whatever, you know. I'm just a simple gamer out here that likes to have fun playing the games that I like, spending my money on the games that come out that I want to play. And I wish every one of y'all would see it that way because you got gamers out here that's taking the fun out of gaming. You got YouTubers out here that poses as gamers but they don't play games. All they want to do is get on YouTube run their mouth because they're bored, unemployed, and this is a way of them trying to get, you know what I'm saying, a paycheck. And the more, and the thing is, they, they lie, point blank, they lie. You got, you also got other YouTubers out here that, um, that, that, you know what I'm saying, come up with certain topics and no, don't have no proof behind it. You know what I'm saying, um, and they want to point the finger at certain communities. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just pointing the finger at all communities. You can't do that, man. You can't single out one community and say this community is doing something more than this one. When we all do it. All of them do it. All of them. So, you know what I'm saying? Be, be fair. You know what I'm saying? That's all I want to say. That's all I got to say. You know, like I said, sound off in the comments section. I'm out. Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. I'm enjoying this game. I hadn't stopped playing it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's fun. Later, guys.